Yeah. Of course, they could have their own gut microbiome, and maybe there could something dangerous for uh, for humans in there. But I I don't think so right away. Um, but of course, it's it's very relevant because it's not only these nematodes throwing; it's bacteria that are throwing, um, and and there could be dangerous things hidden in there. Um, but I, you know, I don't want to, you know, raise an alarm or something in this regard. It's um, it's something that's possible, and with COVID, we all saw what can happen very suddenly. Uh, but I wouldn't say there's like an in, imminent danger now of that these worms bring some bacteria that suddenly start killing humans. This all started when our Russian colleagues uh, dug up uh, a bit of permafrost um, for their studies. And they found that after thawing this, um, some nematodes crawled out of it. So uh, they knew that this um, piece of soil had been frozen for a very long time and then used radiocarbon dating later to determine that it's actually been frozen for 46,000 years. Um, and when they dug it up, they made, um, took all measures they could to not introduce any contamination from the outside, so no uh, species crawling in or anything. So they have a uh, very good reason to believe that everything that's coming out of this patch of soil was frozen for 46,000 years. And then it's, of course, kind of a, a miracle. Well, it's not a miracle, but it's kind of a, a super fascinating finding to suddenly see life, living animals crawling out of a piece of soil that has been deep frozen for 46,000 years. From our main finding is really that uh, we could describe a new species. So um, looking in online databases, we couldn't find any genetic sequences that were the same as in the worms that we found. Uh, so it's a new species. They uh, built this sugar, trialose, which somehow helps them protect their DNA and proteins while they are in this resting stage. And they found, that in our panoglyma species, they basically do the same. They also enrich a lot of triolos, um, which apparently helps them uh, to also protect their cells, their DNA, their proteins when they are frozen. Uh, we live in times with, 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 of global change. And these animals, yeah, they are um, adapted to very extreme environments. So they can completely freeze. And in the same group of species, we, uh, uh, we, we also find some that which can completely desiccate, so lose all water. So that's the same process. And we are working on them in these dry environments here. And if you think about extreme environments and then you know look outside in Greece, everything is burning, everything is getting hotter and warmer, the whole... Uh, Earth seems to be moving to, to a more extreme environment. And, and I think by studying these species, comparing their genomes and see how they adapted to these extreme conditions, we can learn a lot about conservation biology. Uh, we can learn things that could inform us to maybe save um, endangered species um, and, and think about protection measures and, and all these things.
of course, they could have their own gut microbiome, and maybe there could something dangerous for uh, for humans in there. But I I don't think so right away. Um, but of course, it's it's very relevant because it's not only these nematodes throwing; it's bacteria that are throwing, um, and and there could be dangerous things hidden in there. Um, but I you know I don't want to you know raise an alarm or something in this regard. It's um, it's something that's possible and with COVID we all saw what can happen very suddenly uh, but I wouldn't say there's like an in, imminent danger now that these worms bring some bacteria that suddenly start killing humans. <laughs>